Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the uh, cool stuff that I've uh, got for this episode. Over at Forbes.com, there's a uh, post here by Gordon Kelly. He's a contributor. He writes, Steam Machines, this is Valve we're talking about here, Valve's Steam Machines are pointless and Valve is struggling to keep Steam OS relevant. So he starts off, I remember when I first heard Gabe Newell preach the values of Steam OS. I was sold. The Valve co-founder promised it would democratize PC gaming, break the Windows slash DirectX stranglehold in favor of open source, and create an array of powerful, upgradable Steam machines that were not only faster than next generation consoles, but could replace them underneath your TV. So interestingly enough, uh, so he goes on to talk about some of the other things that, uh, that, uh, that Gabe Newell uh, spoke about. Um, then he says, exactly four months since this gaming nirvana was proposed, the honeymoon is not so much over as threatening to not even take off. Every week, new cracks are appearing, and for me, Steam Machines and Steam OS now have all the hallmarks of an almighty flop. And then he goes on to list the reasons why. Number one, PC gaming does not need saving. Steam OS is basically butchered Linux, which is true. Uh, variable pricing is causing all kinds of problems. Upgradability causes more problems. Um, games are published outside Steam. There's, you know, he continues on. There's a couple of pages here. Definitely check this out if you if you want to uh, keep up to date on what's going on on the Steam front. From CrazyEngineers.com, Kingdom Come Deliverance, first CryEngine game planned for Linux. The Czech Republic-located game studio Warhorse Studios has funded a Kickstarter game called Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's powered by Crytek's CryEngine 3. Uh, CryEngine 3 is the latest version of Crytek's game engine on which the games like Crisis 2, Warface, uh, Lichdom, and Sniper, Ghost Warrior 2 uh, were successfully developed. So back in 2012, uh, Michael Larabell of Pharonix first reported about CryEngine's Linux port on Twitter. But since then, there has been no official report by Crytek about Linux or of their latest game engine on Linux. So uh, this is pretty neat. Uh, definitely uh, check this out, especially if you've been following this for a while. From ARABnews.com, Red Hat upgrades cloud infrastructure offerings. Red Hat, a world provider of open source solutions, has announced updates to its OpenStack-powered cloud infrastructure called Red Hat Cloud Infrastructure. So version 4.0 gives enterprises an on-ramp to a highly scalable public cloud-like infrastructure based on OpenStack while providing infrastructure and cost efficiencies. So the new version of Red Hat Cloud Infrastructure features tighter integration between its virtualization, cloud and platform components, enabling users to reduce image inconsistencies and duplications by only creating a single set of virtual images. So pretty cool. Uh, definitely check this out. Um, always awesome when new things uh, come out. From PeriscopePost.com, Tizen OS release has been delayed by Samsung until at least the second half of 2014. This is unfortunate, and I have to say not all that unexpected. Um, Samsung has been uh, attempting to uh, re uh, get a version of Tizen out for a while, and it just keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And, uh, you know, at some point I have to wonder if they're ever going to release it. But anyway, um, they're basically, it'll be, you know, 2014 at the absolute uh, end of 2000, 
excuse me, second half of 2014 at the absolute latest before it will uh, even be available. We have some more uh, Steam OS news. I wanted to break the two apart and give a little separation between the two of them. Uh, in this story over at shacknews.com, the Steam OS installer is, has added dual boot support. Uh, good news for curious early adopters. If you want to try out Steam OS, you no longer need to dedicate it a box solely to its operation. The initial release of Valve's Linux-based OS wouldn't let you run more than one OS out of the box. However, they've just done an update to the Steam OS beta that makes dual boot installation much easier. Though Valve engineer John Vert warned that it's still mostly untested. So you, it is, you still are kind of taking a little bit of a risk, but it, it does make it much, much easier. From WebPro News, the Linux 3.13 kernel has been officially released. The latest Linux kernel was officially released this week bringing several new features with the start of the new year. Linux 3.13 can now be compiled and installed freely. Updates in the 3.13 include NF tables, a packet filtering framework meant to take the place of IP tables. And while IP tables can sometimes cause trouble during system updates, NF tables is expected to do away with these problems. NF tables is also backwards compatible, meaning IP tables users can implement it without much work. So pretty cool, definitely check it out uh, and upgrade. That's all you gotta do. From uh, GigaOM, actually OS Static, it's part of the GigaOM uh, network, I guess you could say. Uh, free BSD 10.2, uh, 10.0 final has been released. Uh, this is uh, pretty awesome. They've been testing this for a while. After an extended series of beta releases, the FreeBSD team has released version 10 dot zero of the venerable operating system. FreeBSD 10 contains major improvements in the kernel, better hardware support, improved virtualization, root on ZFS, which is huge, uh, and many more welcome changes. In fact, I might be, my home server, which I've mentioned this more than once, sits uh, right behind this door right here. Um, it runs FreeBSD right now. I'm on nine dot, whatever the latest dot version is. Uh, I will probably be redoing a lot of this so that I can get uh, really easy uh, root on ZFS because all the other stuff that I have runs on ZFS. So should be pretty interesting. Um, anyway, uh, go check out the release notes. If you're a FreeBSD user, definitely uh, check it out. If you're looking at maybe trying FreeBSD, I highly recommend it for, for the simple fact that ZFS, the Zettabyte file system support built directly into FreeBSD, huge huge you know it makes managing file systems so much easier it's you know really super robust bulletproof you know I, I don't need to say more than that uh that will do it for this edition of linux news log as always everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes which you can find online over at quicksurf.com please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so and uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much uh, for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.